Thanks to WeMax for sponsoring this video. Well, here we are, the 2022 TCL 6 Series review. You know, I spent about three minutes trying to come up with some pithy intro before I realized maybe this TV doesn't really need one. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is the TCL R655 review. The new TCL 6 series is a TV I think a lot of people are going to just want to buy, if only because its predecessors have received such positive praise. But should the R655 get to just ride on the coattails of its legacy? I say no. I think we need to talk about what's new, what's improved, what hasn't improved, and what, if anything, is worse. But most importantly, should you buy this TV? Let's figure that out together. Now, before I get into it, just a heads up that I am not going to be spending a bunch of time in this video comparing this TV to the Hisense U8H, and that's only because that comparison needs its own video, which will, by the way, be the next video I do. So you're gonna wanna come back and see that. Best way to make sure you don't miss it, it's right down there, subscribe and notification bell. Also, we're 25K away, guys, we've got this. Okay, review time. So, little surprise for my regular viewers, we're hopping straight into numbers for Knit Nerds. By the way, I met some of you Knit Nerds out there in uh, Dallas, and that was awesome. You know who you are. Thanks for saying hi. That was a lot of fun. Anyway, if you're not into measurements and deep specs, that's okay. You can skip this section and dive straight into the picture quality takeaways by clicking the link down in the timeline down in the description. So before I start rattling off numbers, I want to send a huge shout out to Meridio, who sent me their 7G 8K pattern generator to try out. This machine is a TV reviewer's dream, you guys. And a huge shout out to Jason Dustel at Meridio, who I consider a friend, but the same great help he's given me, he gives all his customers. So thank you, Jason, for helping me get the most out of this beast. Now, here's the good stuff, y'all. In the movie mode at its brightest setting with local contrast set to high, the R655 put out 515 nits in SDR. The next brightest setting down was 446 nits, and you can bring it down from there if you don't need a super bright picture for when you're just watching basic TV, sports, or other kinds of SDR content. Personally, I consider that 515 nit number plenty adequate for SDR, but is this a great bright room TV for everyday use? I'll get to that in a moment. For HDR, peak brightness was right under 1500 nits, and it was stable at 1100 nits with the 10% window test. So this tells us that its average picture level in HDR can be pretty high, just over the 1000 nit level if you max everything out, and that HDR highlights will top out around 1500 nits. And I consider that really good for a TV in the R655's price range. Are there brighter TVs out there? Yes, there are. But again, we'll get to the bright room TV discussion in just a few minutes. As for out of the box accuracy, the SDR white balance with the warm color temp selection was pretty decent without any adjustment. The Delta E was around three, which is barely detectable. And that's if you know what you're looking for. There was quite a bit of blue and also a lot of red in there too. And that's why I didn't get the vibe like the warm setting had bluish whites. Green was the color that was somewhat anemic. So after reining in the blue and the red just a little bit, I got to a D65 white point, and it did not take a whole lot of work for this panel. HDR white balance was a bit more off with a Delta E of five. Not exactly accurate, but then I don't expect a TV at this price to scream accuracy. A little adjustment and I got to D65, and I am happy to report that because not a lot of adjustment was necessary, the peak brightness numbers did not change. Color accuracy out of the box was about what I expected, which is to say not super accurate, but by no means egregiously bad. The average error was just shy of six. And again, for a TV at this price, that's exactly what I would expect. So should you get the TCL 6 series calibrated? I guess that depends on how close to accuracy you wanna be. I don't think most people would need or want to, but I will say that this TV is such a good performer overall that it would not be a waste of money if you have lofty standards, but not such a lofty budget. You can save a lot of money buying this TV and spend a little getting it adjusted and get very close to the performance of much more expensive TVs. I mean, sounds like a TCL 6 series, right? And that brings me to my picture quality takeaway. This TV performs extremely well for its price point. It offers solid HDR specular highlights, 
The local dimming is outstanding for a TV at this price. So you get incredibly deep blacks, albeit with a slight hit to really dark shadow detail at times, though nothing to get upset about. Blooming is extremely well mitigated. I would happily put this TV in my bedroom or a dedicated light controlled viewing room. The color looks outstanding, rich when it needs to be, vivid when it needs to be. The motion resolution is surprisingly good. Like I didn't get hardly any stutter with this TV and it resolves 24 frame per second content extremely well. And that's with no motion smoothing turned on at all. All told, this TV is fantastic for the money, but it does have a few weaknesses I noticed. One is that there isn't much in the way of anti-glare treatment. Now, this has the benefit of helping blacks and colors look very deep and rich with a slight gloss to them, but it also has the drawback of not doing much to handle reflections. So if you have bright windows, you can expect to see reflections when watching dark content during the day. Also, this is not a searingly bright TV. So if you do a lot of day watching and don't have a way of dimming the light coming into your room, You'll need to go with one of the brighter picture modes so the average picture level is juiced up and you get a bright enough image for that bright room. So having said all that, if you watch most of your TV during the day or if watching football during the day is way more important than watching movies at night, then the TCL 6 series will do, but there are some better options for those of you with those kind of viewing habits. Another weakness on the TCL R655 seems to be in cleaning up low luminance, low bit depth content. So. Take this 1080p YouTube video, for instance. Anytime you have large swaths of dark area, the macro blocking, it looks like big cubes of darkness in the picture, is pretty severe. Now granted, this is a 75 inch TV, so that's gonna be more obvious than the 65 or 55 inch version, but I think it is problematic all the same. Now, I don't have cable TV here, so I can't test it with a 720p or 1080i signal, but I think we'd see the same with cable. Now to be clear, in mid to high brightness areas, the picture looks great. It's when the TV gets dark and the signal is trashy that we see the problem. I saw this with local broadcast TV too. Now, this is not the case with higher quality streams. So if you're watching something on Netflix, HBO Max, Hulu, Disney Plus, those streams have a high enough bit depth whether they're 1080p or 4K, that you don't get any of that macro blocking. So I guess I'd say if you're gonna watch Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon on HBO Max, you'll be okay. But if you're watching that on cable, I'm concerned the picture could be a little messy. And that's on top of it already being a challengingly dark show to watch in the first place. Speaking of House of the Dragon, I wanna show you something I discovered when I connected the Xbox Series X and started some basic gaming tests. First off, there's a lot to love here about the gaming capabilities of the R655. When I connected the Xbox Series X, the TV instantly recognized that it was an Xbox, and then it popped up a notification that it was going into game mode, which is great. Auto game mode, cool. And when I go to display properties in the Xbox menu, I see that this TV can do all of the things either the Xbox or PS5 can put out. 4K, 120, HDR, Dolby Vision, the R655 can do it all, and I love that. Plus, if you're a PC gamer with a rig that can do it, the TV will go up to 144 hertz for you, variable refresh rate and all. So from those perspectives, the R655 looks like a great TV for gaming. Anyway, I went ahead and did the HDR calibration sequence in the Xbox and got all that set up, but then something weird happened. I was actually thinking the frame rate on House of the Dragon through the Roku's HBO Max app looked a little bit funny. Turns out it wasn't, but to test it, I loaded up the same scene on the Xbox's HBO Max app and whoa, the image was so much brighter. In fact, it looked way, way off because we know these scenes are meant to be super dark, but they looked over brightened and lifted. I figured, well, that might be what the TCL's game mode settings do, but I was surprised to find out that it was in the dark picture mode with dark HDR selected, again, in the game mode. Now I figure I can probably adjust other picture settings to correct the lifted picture level, but why is it like that? I'll dig deeper into this for the next video, but what I can say is one, it should be way easier to be able to pop out of game mode. Two, it would be nice if the TV detected I was playing movie or TV content, not a game, and then adjust automatically like we've seen with other TVs. And three, the image should not be lifted like this by default. 
Hey, I want to thank our video sponsor, the WeMax Nova 4K UST Laser Projector. Ultra short throw projectors are a convenient and cost-effective way to enjoy a cinema-like experience at home. And thanks to the WeMax Nova 4K UST Laser Projector, that premium experience is now more affordable than ever. The Nova 4K UST Laser Projector generates up to 2100 lumens of peak brightness for a gorgeous 4K HDR image, even if your room isn't totally blacked out. And if you want to go big, I mean really big, the WeMax Nova 4K can display images up to 100 150 diagonal inches. Compare that to UST projectors that cost twice as much, but cap out at 120 inches. With its big, bright image also comes premium sound, thanks to powerful 30-watt speakers built right in. And with Android TV, you'll be ready to stream from your favorite apps in minutes. You can even cast content right to the projector with your mobile device or PC. But the real convenience comes with ease of setup. All you need is about 35 inches of clearance from a wall or a projector screen to get a 150-inch image. And snappy autofocus and eight-point keystone correction make dialing in the image a snap. Best of all, use the link in the description down below to get an exclusive exclusive 30% discount. That's almost as huge as the image. Thanks again to the WeMax Nova 4K UST laser projector for sponsoring this video. So now I have to weigh some pretty heavy things on opposite sides of the scale. I mean, for 90% of what I watched on this TV and considering the measurement results, the TCL R655 has been awesome. It looks fantastic. On the other hand, the macro blocking in dark areas on low bit depth content like a YouTube video, broadcast TV, and probably cable TV is not great. It won't be a problem for a large percentage of the time, I don't think, but I'm not a fan of what I'm seeing there. Also, it's not the absolute best choice for a Brightroom TV, and by that I mean for folks who watch mostly during the day in a room flooded with sunlight. It does fine with normal overhead illumination. And then there's the curiosities with game mode picture performance. Although I will say on the whole, the TV is super responsive and games look gorgeous. So where do I land with all this then? Well, I guess I'm a little disappointed to say that I don't think the R655 is the slam dunk everyone should buy a TV that I wanted it to be. There are some cases, albeit few of them, where it isn't necessarily the best choice. But I suspect that over 90% of the folks out there on the TV market that want high performance at a manageable price are going to love the R655. Look, we try to go fairly deep on this channel, and so we unearth the little quirks and peculiarities and talk about them. But when I step back and consider the R655 on the whole, I'm still in love. I still think this TV is carrying on the TCL 6 Series legacy in a great way. And I reckon this model is going to be immensely popular, especially since as of the day this video publishes, there's also an 85 inch model available. So from 55 inches up to 85 inches, it looks like the TCL R655 is still one of the smartest buys you can make. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think about the R655 and are you stoked to see it compared to the Hisense U8H? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and here's two other videos I think you might like.